VHS tapes up to four hours. Here, hidden, is the push button panel. Suppose you want to dial 23650. Dial each numeral. The 1980s brought technologies that shaped our daily lives. VHS tapes, audio cassettes, and beepers were once essential. But how did our routines evolve as we traded in these tools for modern conveniences? And what drove the shift from beepers to the smartphones we can't live without? Join us as we explore 25 things from the 1980s once necessary, now completely obsolete. If you have trouble programming your VCR, hmm. may we suggest a Panasonic? Huh? You see, you can program one straight out of the box. VHS tapes and VCRs were key to home entertainment in the 1980s. VHS tapes, short for Video Home System, were cassette tapes that recorded and played videos, while VCRs, or video cassette recorders, were the devices used to play them. Families gathered around the TV to watch rented movies or recorded TV shows. VHS tapes were large and could hold up to two hours of video, though their picture and sound quality were not as clear as today's digital formats. VCRs were also bulky and needed regular maintenance to avoid damaging tapes. DVDs, Blu-rays, and streaming services provide better quality and convenience. VHS tapes transformed home entertainment, but what about how we communicated? Let's explore rotary dial telephones. It's nice having friends you can depend on, like genuine Bell. I chose Bell because they make them like they used to. Rotary dial telephones were common in homes and offices in the 1980s. These phones had a circular dial with holes for each number. To make a call, users placed their finger in the hole for the chosen number and turned the dial until it hit a metal stop, sending electrical pulses to the telephone exchange to connect the call. Rotary phones were durable and didn't need electricity, making them reliable during power outages. Dialing numbers, especially with many digits, took time. Push-button phones, faster and easier to use, became popular in the 1980s and by the 1990s, rotary phones had mostly disappeared. Why panic? When you can rely on Maxell Super RD2 floppy disks. With their distinctive multi-layer liner, unique disk surface treatment. Floppy disks were an essential tool for storing and transferring data. These thin, flexible magnetic storage devices were enclosed in a square plastic case and came in sizes like 5 and 1 quarter inch and 3 and 1 half inch. They held between 360 kilobytes and 1.44 megabytes of data, which was significant then. People used floppy disks for tasks such as saving documents and running software. They were portable and easy to use, requiring insertion into a disk drive connected to the computer. Despite their convenience, floppy disks were vulnerable to damage from dust, heat, and magnetic fields. By the early 2000s, they had become obsolete and were replaced by more advanced storage options. She's a certified goddess, your soulmate waiting to happen. Without your Motorola pager, you would have missed her because you were out doing guy stuff. Pagers, also called beepers, were essential devices for staying connected. They were small and portable, capable of receiving messages and alerting users with a beep or a vibration. Used by doctors, emergency responders, and professionals, they allowed people to stay reachable at all times. A pager would display a phone number or short message, prompting users to find a phone and return the call. Pagers were reliable and worked in areas without cell phones, using radio frequencies to avoid network issues. Despite their reliability, pagers could only receive short numeric or text messages. With mobile phones offering more features, pagers became outdated in the 1990s. Answering machines with cassette tapes were a common household feature in the 1980s. These devices allowed people to record and replay messages left by callers when they couldn't answer the phone. The machine stored the outgoing greetings and incoming messages on a small cassette tapes. Callers heard the recorded greeting and left their messages on the tape. These machines were useful for busy families and professionals, ensuring no important calls were missed. Tapes had limited storage, required frequent rewinding or replacing, and could tangle or break. With digital technology in the 1990s, these machines were replaced by more reliable voicemail services. Answering machines transformed communication, but how did portable cassette players further change our listening habits? Let's explore. 
really feel the music with a Sony Walkman. The Sony Walkman is a tiny stereo cassette player with truly incredible sound. The Walkman and portable cassette players were groundbreaking gadgets in the 1980s that changed how people listen to music. Introduced by Sony in 1979, the Walkman allowed music lovers to take their favorite songs anywhere. It was small, lightweight, and came with headphones perfect for jogging, commuting, or relaxing in the park. Users could create mixtapes, giving their listening experience a personal touch long before digital players arrived. As digital technology advanced in the late 1990s and early 2000s, CDs, MP3 players, and smartphones replaced these devices. Recently, there has been renewed interest in vintage audio equipment, including cassette players. The one and only Southwestern Bell Yellow Pages. It gets beat up, bruised, battered. Phone books were essential tools for finding contact information back then. These large books, divided into white pages for residential listings and yellow pages for businesses, were delivered to every household each year. In specific areas, they contained individuals' and companies' names, addresses, and phone numbers. People used them to find friends, neighbors, or local services. The yellow pages were especially helpful for locating businesses, from plumbers to restaurants. The rise of the internet and digital technology made phone books unnecessary, as online directories provided instant access. Mobile phones, caller ID, and environmental concerns also contributed to the decline of phone books, reducing paper waste and resource use. At first, IBM electric typewriters made typing easier. Then we improved the way typing looked and revolutionized its touch and feel. Typewriters were essential tools for writing and office tasks. These machines allowed people to type characters onto paper by striking an inked ribbon. They were used for writing letters, reports, and manuscripts. Typewriters were reliable and could function for many years with proper care. The sound of keys hitting the paper and sliding inked letters was common. However, typewriters became outdated with the rise of personal computers and word processors in the late 20th century. Computers allowed users to edit, save, and print documents easily, offering features like spell check and text formatting, which made typewriters less practical. Typewriters faded as computers took over, but how did people manage copies before photocopiers? Let's explore carbon paper. Carbon paper was a common tool for making copies of documents in the 1980s. It was a thin sheet coated with a layer of carbon-based ink. When placed between two sheets of paper, writing or typing on the top transfers the ink onto the bottom, creating a duplicate. This method was widely used in offices for copying invoices, receipts, and other important documents. The term CC in emails, meaning carbon copy, came from this practice. The rise of photocopiers and digital technology made carbon paper outdated. Photocopiers allowed quick and easy duplication of documents, while computers and printers simplified the process, enabling users to create and print multiple copies easily. Have you seen the Elf? The Elf does its magic with advanced photo system film. Presto, it's loaded. Now take super shots in three different sizes. In the 1980s, Film cameras were the main way to capture memories. These cameras used rolls of film that had to be developed in photo labs. People would drop off their films at photo development shops and wait days to see their pictures. The excitement of picking up printed photos created a special experience shared with family and friends. Film cameras required careful handling and skill since each roll allowed only a limited number of shots. The late 1990s and early 2000s digital revolution made film cameras and photo development shops mostly outdated. Digital cameras and smartphones provide instant previews, unlimited storage, and easy sharing on social media. Despite this shift, interest in film photography grew among enthusiasts who valued its artistic qualities and the nostalgic feel of physical prints. The Rolodex was an important tool for organizing contact information in the 1980s. This rotating file system sat on office desks and held cards with names, phone numbers, and addresses. Each card flipped easily, making it simple to find the contact needed. The Rolodex 
represented professionalism and efficiency, helping people track their business and personal connections. With the rise of digital technology, the Rolodex became outdated. Personal computers and later smartphones introduced digital contact lists and address books. These tools provided more convenience, allowing users to easily store, search, and update contact information. Cloud storage ensured contacts remained accessible even if a device was lost or damaged. In the 1980s, map books and fold-out paper maps were vital for navigation. Whether planning a road trip or searching for a new restaurant, these maps were essential tools. Map books, kept in car glove compartments, provided detailed routes and landmarks. Fold-out maps, which could be difficult to refold, offered a wide view of regions or cities. They were necessary for travelers and adventurers alike. The rise of digital technology made these paper maps outdated. GPS devices and smartphone applications like Google Maps changed navigation. These digital tools provided real-time updates, turn-by-turn -turn directions, and traffic alerts, making travel more convenient and efficient. With the decline of paper maps, how did communication change with the rise of payphones? Let's explore. I'll wrap up the Bosbo contract so you find a U.S. West payphone, because for a dollar, you can make a long-distance call to anyone in Northern Oregon. In the 1980s, public payphones were common on street corners, shopping malls, and gas stations. These coin-operated phones were necessary for making calls when people were away from home. Individuals carried coins or phone cards to use these phones, which were placed in booths for privacy. Payphones provided an important way to communicate, especially during emergencies or for travelers needing to check in with family or friends. As mobile phones became cheaper and more available, the need for payphones decreased. By the early 2000s, many payphones were removed because of fewer users and high maintenance costs. Today, finding a working payphone is rare and they're seen as reminders of the past. I can't believe I get all these channels for free. And in HD, Clear TV is for real. TV antenna adjusters were essential tools for households in the 1980s. These devices helped improve the position of rooftop or indoor antennas to get the best television signal. Before digital broadcasting and cable television, signals came over the air, and their quality depended on the antenna's direction and placement. Adjusters let users rotate and tilt their antennas to capture clearer pictures and sound. Using a TV antenna adjuster requires patience and skill. Families gathered around the TV while one person adjusted the antenna and others shouted feedback about the picture quality. Despite the difficulties, these adjusters played an important role in ensuring enjoyable TV viewing experiences. At Home Video Express, you'll find over 10,000 videos, including a huge selection of current releases. Plus, Video rental stores were key to home entertainment in the 1980s. Families and friends went to these stores to rent VHS tapes of the latest movies and TV shows. Browsing through colorful VHS covers, picking out a movie, and bringing it home for a cozy night in was popular. Well-known chains like Blockbuster and Hollywood Video provided various films and video games. The process was simple. Customers choose a movie, rented it for a few days, and returned it by the due date to avoid late fees. These stores served as social hubs, where people discovered new films and shared recommendations with staff knowing customers' preferences. The rise of digital technology and streaming services like Netflix and Hulu made video rental stores no longer necessary. Dot matrix printers were popular in the 1980s and found in many offices and homes. These printers had a print head that moved back and forth, hitting an ink-soaked ribbon against paper to create characters and images. Tiny pins on the print head made patterns of dots, which combined to produce text and simple graphics. Although noisy and slow compared to today's printers, dot matrix printers were appreciated for their durability and ability to print on multi-part forms making them great for invoices and receipts. They could also use continuous feed paper, which allowed for printing long documents without reloading frequently. Despite their usefulness, the print quality was low and the noise was a concern in busy environments. Dot matrix printers paved the way for efficient document handling, 
but what replaced them? Now let's explore fax machines. Put your request on paper and send it on a Pitney Bowes facsimile machine. Your message is there, and the answer is back in seconds. Fax machines were essential for businesses and offices in the 1980s. They allowed people to send documents quickly over telephone lines. A fax machine scanned a document, turned it into a bitmap, and sent it as audio tones. The receiving fax machine decoded these tones and printed the document. This groundbreaking technology enabled almost instant document sharing across long distances. With the rise of the internet and digital communication, fax machines became outdated. Email and cloud storage offer faster, more efficient, and more secure ways to share documents without needing paper, ink, or a dedicated phone line. Some industries like healthcare and law still use fax machines for security and reliability. In the 1980s, analog card dashboards were the standard. These dashboards featured physical gauges and dials that displayed information like speed, fuel level, and engine temperature. Each indicator had a needle that moved to show the current status, providing drivers with important information at a glance. The simplicity and reliability of these analog systems made them popular in cars for many years. As technology progressed, digital dashboards replaced analog ones. Digital dashboards use LED or LCD screens to display a wide range of data, including navigation, multimedia, and vehicle diagnostics, all in one place. This shift rendered analog dashboards mostly outdated. This is a personal digital assistant, a PDA. In fact, this is the expert pad from Sharp. It's their version of a Newton. In fact, it uses Newton technology from Apple. Personal digital assistants, or PDAs, were groundbreaking devices in the 1980s and 90s. These pocket-sized gadgets help people manage personal information like contacts, calendars, and notes. Early models, like the Python Organizer and Apple Newton, had small screens and required a stylus for input. PDAs gained popularity because they provided a portable way to organize tasks and information, marking a significant technological advancement. As smartphones emerged in the late 2000s, they quickly replaced PDAs. Smartphones combined PDA features with phone calls, texting, and internet access. The iPhone and Android phones offered touchscreens, applications, and powerful processors, making them much more versatile than PDA. Here, hidden, is the push-button panel. It operates exactly in the same way as the wireless remote unit. Remote controls for TVs and VCRs in the 80s had cords and were common in homes. These remotes were connected to devices using a long cable which makes it difficult for users to move around freely. Unlike today's wireless remotes, these corded ones required people to sit close to the TV or VCR, making it necessary to stretch the cord across the living room, which could cause someone to trip. Their main purpose was to change channels, adjust the volume, and control VCR playback. While they were a helpful improvement over manually operating the devices, they quickly became outdated as technology improved leading to wireless remotes with features like voice control and touchscreens. While corded remotes simplified TV watching, could slide projectors have transformed family photo sharing? Let's explore. Perfect way to show and enjoy the color slides you took last summer. It's the new Kodak 300 color slide projector. Slide projectors were essential devices in homes and offices during the 1980s. They displayed photographic slides which were small, clear images placed in frames. The projector would shine light through the slide, making the image larger on a screen or wall. This allowed families to share vacation photos and teachers to present classroom lessons. Many people enjoyed gathering to watch slides of trips, and the distinctive click sound when changing slides became familiar. Despite their popularity, slide projectors had some downsides. They were large and needed careful handling of slides, and the bulbs required regular replacement. The dominant advantages of all microphones are their ease of handling and their savings in storage area. Microfish readers were important tools in libraries during the 1980s. These machines allowed people to view microfish, small sheets of film with tiny images of documents. Libraries use microfish to keep information in small spaces, such as newspapers, academic journals, and historical records. 
Users place the microfish sheet into the reader to read these small images, which enlarge the images on a screen. Microfish readers were especially helpful for researchers and students who needed to access old or rare documents. Instead of handling delicate originals, they could view and print copies from the microfish. Using these machines required patience and skill as users had to manually navigate through the images, spending hours in dimly lit library basements. Mistake Sharp's giant picture tube TV for real life. The clarity of Sharp's smaller TVs is now on a 35-inch screen with real stereo sound. Cathode ray tube monitors and televisions were the foundation of home entertainment and computing. These large devices with deep backs and heavy glass screens were the standard for displaying images and videos. CRT technology works by sending electrons from the back of the tube toward the screen, which is coated with phosphor dots. When the electrons hit these dots, they glow, creating the images people see. In the 1980s, CRTs filled living rooms and computer desks. They were necessary for watching television shows, playing video games, and using computers. Despite their popularity, CRTs had significant drawbacks. They were heavy, used much power, took up a lot of space, and had a noticeable flicker that could strain the eyes during prolonged use. Computers, word processing, there's no mystery to WordStar. A simple disk contains everything necessary to put your business information into print. Dedicated word processors served as vital tools for writers and office workers in the 1980s. These machines combined the features of a typewriter and a computer, enabling users to easily type, edit, and print documents. Unlike modern computers, dedicated word processors focused solely on word processing tasks. In the 1980s, they were a significant improvement over typewriters, featuring small screens for text previews, built-in storage for saving documents, and the ability to fix mistakes without retyping entire pages. Popular brands included Wang, Brother, and Smith Corona, and these devices were found in offices and homes. Despite their advantages, dedicated word processors were bulky, costly, and less versatile than personal computers, which soon replaced them as they became more affordable and powerful. Better Life is taking your favorite music wherever you go, or taping it wherever you are with a Sanyo tape recorder. That's love. That's love. Audio cassette tape recorders were essential for students, journalists, and professionals in the 1980s. These portable devices let users record lectures, interviews, and meetings easily. The process was straightforward. Users inserted a blank cassette tape, pressed the record button, and captured audio through the built-in microphone. In that era, audio cassette recorders represented a major improvement over earlier reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders. They were smaller, easier to use, and more affordable. Leading brands like Sony, Panasonic, and Philips provided various models with features such as voice activation, which started recording automatically when someone spoke. Still, cassette tape recorders faced challenges. Tapes could tangle or get damaged, and the audio quality could have been clearer. Finding specific parts of a recording required rewinding or fast-forwarding the tape, which consumed time. 